In this presentation, we will discuss assertions about classes of transactions and related control procedure. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. In this presentation, we will take a look at assertions about classes of transactions and related control procedures. So we're going to think about the assertions related to implementing the internal control. So we're thinking about management putting together their internal controls. They're basically sets of checks and balances. We're going to consider the assertions for which they would want to put controls in place for, and then the type of control activities, the actual putting in place of those controls that would relate to those assertions. Now, this is going to be important for us to know because it's often something that people get confused on both in a testing situation and in practice, because we often start to just basically memorize different types of controls. And we say, well, you just have to put this control in place. And that's just it. That's just the way it is, because I, that's where I was last time I learned a system of controls. These are the controls. You need to put those into place. And when we're testing, we often do the same thing uh, when we're actually testing these, these uh, assertions and the different sets of controls from the audit perspective, we do a similar process. We need to test this particular test, but from a test standpoint, as well as the implementation, we need to know the whole process to really do it well, because each business is different uh, to some degree. So we need to first think about what the assertions are and then think about the types of uh, controls that would be put in place in order to ch achieve those objectives. Now, some of them will be universal. Obviously, everybody has a bank account Everybody should be reconciling their bank account and doing certain things over cash. And you could basically say, hey, those controls are universal, but you should still basically know the assertions related to it because we want to know the whys. And that'll help us really to customize the internal controls, which is what we want to do. We want to basically say, hey, what are the risks for this particular organization? And then put in a, se a set of controls related to those. And one way to think about that is the assertions. Also, test questions will break out in this format in two which students have a lot of, of trouble to to pick up, meaning they'll we'll think about the, the types of control activities, but possibly have difficulty tying those control activities out to the proper uh, assertion. So you want to be able to pick that up. So first we have the assertion of occurrence. So what type of uh, control activities would be related to the assertion of occurrence? We have things like uh, the segregation of duties. And remember, occurrence basically means you're kind of thinking about the completed work, the financial statements, the GL, uh, with the books being put together. And then you're trying to say, is this stuff that they put on the books, did it actually occur? The testing that actually occurred. Or from the management standpoint, we have this stuff in the end product on, on the financial statements. We want to see if uh, that actually happened uh, in terms of occurrence. So did it actually happen? So we're going from the end result backwards, typically. So we could have segregation of duties. It's going to help with the assertion of occurrence segregation of duties, one of the major type of internal controls that we will have because it, it'll mean that we typically have two people involved in most systems and therefore it's less likely for an occurrence problem be, to be due to error or due to something like fraud due to the segregation of duties. So segregation of duties, if we don't know an answer to a test question, probably a decent guess to go for the separation of duties, the segregation of duties. Pre-numbered documents that are accounted for. 
So if we have the pre-numbered documentation, that can help us with the occurrence. Daily or monthly reconciliation of subsidiary records with independent review. So we, we want to think about uh, the subsidiary records, things like the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, breaking out by a customer, tying that out to something like the general ledger account with a uh, independent review. Completeness. Now we're thinking about completeness. Now we're kind of thinking about the other side of things. Occurrence. We're going from the end result back. Completeness. We're thinking about is the, are there transactions that happened that should have been recorded financial transactions but weren't. They didn't make it to the GL. They didn't make it to the financial statements. How can we set up internal controls to, to reduce that uh, to, to be able to say that the assertion of completeness has been met and have controls to be somewhat uh, confident of that. We could have pre-numbered documents that are accounted for. So that pre-numbered documentation is going to give us a check. We could have the segregation of duties. Once again, segregation of duties, making it less likely that an error happens, that we didn't record a transaction. If there's more than one person involved in the recording of that transaction process, it also makes it less likely that there's something like uh, collusion or, or some, you know, it would take collusion, two people getting together to commit some type of fraud intentionally. Uh, not making the financial statements complete for some reason. Daily or monthly reconciliation of subsidiary records with independent review. So we're going to do that same process of looking at those subsidiary ledgers and reviewing them to make sure that they tie out to what is on the actual financial statements. Things like the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger by customer, accounts payable by vendor. Then we have authorization. Do we have the proper authorizations within our control system? Uh, we have general and specific authorization and transactions at important control points. We want to make sure that we have those authorizations in, in place in those specific control points and that we're ba basically able to show and show that those actions are taking place, that the authorization is happening. Uh, accuracy, internal verification of amounts and calculations, monthly reconciliation of subsidiary records by independent persons. So obviously accuracy, we want to see if, if things being reported are accurate. So we have uh, internal verification of amounts and calculations. We want to verify uh, different types of calculations, especially calculations possibly that uh, might be a little bit uh, more unusual. Things like calculating the allowance for doubtful accounts or depreciation. And then monthly reconciliation of subsidiary records by an independent person. Once again, will help us with that accuracy because things like the subsidiary ledgers for the accounts receivable and accounts payable, uh, making sure that those are lining up and tying out to the ledgers as well as something like inventory and things like that will be tying out to the uh, primary account. And then we have the cutoffs, which have to do with the end of the period and the beginning of the period, the, the proper timing of the information. Is it reported in the proper time period? You're thinking of things like adjusting entries with financial statements. Those are the timing type of entries to make sure that we have properly aligned with the typically accrual principles of revenue recognition and matching or expense recognition. Uh, those are procedures for prompt recording of transactions and internal review verification. So the prompt recording of transactions is going to help us to, to not have that problem of say recorded an invoice that was with the work was done before the time period ended but we didn't invoice till after the time periods ended and therefore we rec recorded the revenue afterwards if we the closer we're able to record transactions to the date that that the transaction happened the more likely we're going to not have like cutoff issues where we have these timing problems uh and and then we have want internal reviews and verifications next assertion classification and presentation internal review and verification as part of the uh, control activities and the chart of accounts.